Why wait to earn the degree you deserve? You have the experience. You have the knowledge. Now is the time to get the credit for the work you've done and earn the recognition you deserve by starting your comeback at Purdue Global. It's time to earn a degree you'll be proud of. A degree that employers will respect. It's never too late. Never too late to come back stronger and move forward in your career. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Purdue's online university for working adults. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by my very own man piece, Eric Sirianni. He has produced, edited, and mixed this podcast, and you can get at him at ericsiriani.com or click the link to his website in our show notes. Episode three, Healthy Food, The Frugal Friends Way. Welcome to The Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. So let's get into seeing what the internet has to say about healthy food, because this episode is all about how to eat healthy on a budget in a frugal way. Yeah. So our first article is from rootandrevel.com and root and revel is a like a healthy eating blog. So uh and she has 30 ways to save money and eat healthy on a budget. So I liked a lot of these. My favorite one um was to buy food and use food because I'm a big proponent for mm. using the food that you buy mm. and uh, using it either um, at its peak in a recipe or um, using it like uh, like bananas when they go bad, uh, repurposing them into like banana bread or something. Uh, or even when something gets past its prime, uh, we're making a compost so that we can start like a little garden. Uh, That's one of Travis's current projects. So Mm, I am all about optimizing food use. So how about you, Jill? I like that. And I must say, this is a domain that I have not conquered. So I am learning right alongside the rest of them. But this week was really challenging for me to like read these articles and be thinking specifically about my food consumption and my food waste. So I appreciated that. And what you're saying about not wasting food, I really like it. I think I have some of my like go-to tricks and how I don't waste food. And then other times I just totally completely waste food and it gets thrown out but my it's become like it's become like a joke between eric and i because my go-to when i can't figure out what to do for dinner i'm like let's just buy a whole rotisserie chicken (laughs) and eat that and then with the leftovers i'll make chicken salad for lunch and like that's like my only it was creative at one point and now it's just like my go-to. And so anytime I'm just like, Oh, I don't know what to do. He's just like, let's just get a whole rotisserie chicken and then use the leftovers to make chicken salad. Yeah. (laughs) That's that's uh, my only tip. We can't do that in our home because I don't eat chicken, but uh, Mm. yeah. So when, so for us, it's like eating cereal, which is so sad. (laughs) So, but we, uh, um, yeah, Travis really enjoys cereal. That's actually what he ate tonight because I went out, uh, with some coworkers, but, um, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of our go-to, which isn't the healthiest and isn't appropriate for this. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's real life. Yeah. That's You can't do everything perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah I, and here's how we don't do it yeah. really. <laughs> so, it's all about balance right you do you optimize everything when you are capable that way when you are incapable the times that you fail are less severe so well, justification station uh-huh that's that's <laughs> where i live so um Another one, speaking of not eating chicken, another one of her points was reducing animal product consumption. Mm -hmm. So I obviously resonate with that um, being a pescatarian. I don't eat anything that walks minus (laughs) shrimp, I think kind of walk, but don't count that. Um, And I don't eat fish that often. But so I think... One of the main reasons that we are able to keep our grocery budget really low, even though I buy a lot of produce and healthy grains, is because we don't eat meat. Because meat is the most expensive part of a grocery bill. And it's not that I'm against eating animal products, um, but it has been something that keeps our bill lower and we'll eat eggs and um cheese and you know all the stuff that vegetarians like the animal buy products and stuff but we we don't buy like raw or cooked meat so um yeah but that's something yeah, that resonates. I mean that's I like that too in in this article the reducing animal product because I think even for people who aren't pescatarian or vegetarian or whatever else there there is that they've come up with these days, <laughs> we still consume more meat than we need to. Like it doesn't need to be the main course on our plate to give us like the nutrients and energy that we need. So while I am, while I eat meat, I I definitely don't eat as much as I think a normal person. And that helps too. I had a friend who was in the unfortunate predicament of becoming a vegetarian because she made such little money. (laughs) That that may be the reason why I became a vegetarian. I don't want to, I don't want to divulge any secrets, but I was in college. (laughs) Maybe. And there's a lot of mac and cheese and ramen in college. (laughs) Yeah. um, Like pasta and spaghetti sauce is super cheap. Super cheap. (laughs) <laughs> Not super healthy. So we're trying to right. pair the two now. <laughs> healthy yeah. and frugal. <laughs> um, I really liked number four, which was use the whole food. And at first I thought they were like, shop at Whole Foods. And I was like, no, they can't be saying that. <laughs> and sure enough, <laughs> I read more. Um, so basically like, really not throwing anything out of the, of the food product. And I mean, mm-hmm. some things, but, but we can utilize more of a veggie or a fruit than we realize. Um, and she gave some examples in the article. And one, one thing came to mind when I read that, I remember when I was in Thailand, I was helping some of the women cook who were like preparing this meal for a group of us. And they, they were using the stem of the broccoli, like all of the broccoli, the broccoli was going in, but also like the trunk of it. And they, they bought it, you know, big, um, you know, so there was like five inches of stem on the broccoli and they're chopping it up and putting it into the stew. And I had been eating it all that time, not realizing what it was. And just like, this is so good. It's like tender, but had this like sweetness to it. And then I realized that it was the stem of the broccoli. And I was like, 
Oh my word. Like we throw that out. Like you intentionally Mm -hmm. chop around the stem of it. And I'm like, I've been missing out on this sweet, tender goodness all this time. (laughs) That is the broccoli tree trunk. Like (gasps) what in the world? And then you've been eating chicken and you could have been eating broccoli trunk, (laughs) broccoli trunk, get into some broccoli trunk. I could (gasps) see that on a shirt actually. (laughs) Um, yeah. And so this article reminded me of that and how, yeah, I mean, take that broccoli trunk idea and just translate it to every other avenue of life and be like, can I eat this? Can I eat this? You know, pretend like we're foragers uh-huh. at the beginning yeah. of time and treat yeah. food like, well, is this edible? Do I just throw this away because the rest of society tells me to? Or like, can I eat this? You know, you might mm-hmm. get a few stomach bugs, but it'll be worth it in the end. <laughs> <laughs> and there are like recipes for how to use those things too. You don't have to just like throw them into your roasted food. No, I'm like, picturing like taking all my clothes off, putting on like some leaves and sticks and I'm in the woods and I'm asking, can I eat it? <laughs> That's what it's looking like. You don't have to be as weird as Jill about food. <laughs> you can just throw stuff in a smoothie or maybe make a pesto. Some of the things that she recommends. Uh, <laughs> or you could uh, go like that and just throw that on and and head out into the woods. Yeah. So, but yeah. it's up to you. Yeah. However you want to approach this. You'll yeah. end up frugal either way. You really will. And you should tell <laughs> us about it because especially if you're going out into the woods and foraging <laughs> in in whatever outfit Joe was just describing. I don't think I'd last long. I think I'll put it that way. I don't Yeah. I think I'll last I'd, long. But I mean you'd look good doing it, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> tell me about it. Oh yeah. <laughs> um one of the things that I did not like about this article um, was her suggestion for um, using those meal deliveries. Um, yeah. yeah, that was number 22, using a meal delivery kit. And she, so she suggests Sun Basket, which is a super healthy meal delivery kit. Um, but, and her argument is that you eliminate waste, which is true. You do eliminate waste, but at the sacrifice of spending more money to have that stuff shipped to you. And then you have the packaging waste that it causes, which some of it is recyclable and some of it is not. Like I've gotten a HelloFresh and it's like part of the whole thing is like ice packs. And you can't recycle those. You just either reuse them or throw them away. So Mm -hmm. it's if you want to use a meal delivery kit, it can still be frugal if your goal is to eliminate waste, but it's not necessarily um, a money saver Mm -hmm. in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was trying to come up with, with a lot of tips and tricks. And so I think like, it's also what's attainable to various pockets of population. But I agree with you. Like there's things that are appealing to it. And I'm not saying I would never do the meal delivery services. You know, it's fun. It can be like a good date night or just fun activity alone, whatever. But uh, you're definitely not saving money. However, if you're a person who's constantly going out to eat or ordering in, this probably, it it probably would be more cost effective than that. I think it depends on like the cost benefit analysis of like what your life currently looks like um, and how frugal you're trying to get. Yeah. So true. If you're like in one end of the spectrum and cooking scares you so much, then it definitely breaks down like the barrier to entry to like eating at home more. Mm -hmm. So that, So that can be good, but it's, um, yeah, so it's frugal in that sense. But if you've already graduated past uh, eating out multiple times a week, then probably not your best option. Is there like a hierarchy? I'm like hearing a hierarchy, like you graduate, you graduate Mm -hmm. from doing that. Oh my goodness. 
There's so much. I feel like there's always there's a hierarchy for everything. I feel like (laughs) so there's always somebody like further down the line than you that's doing something like before I started thinking about spending less. And I thought of people who shopped at Aldi or these like discount grocery stores. I was like, oh, I could never do that. That is just below my level (laughs) Um, or like too extreme. And then once you like try it out and stuff, then you just like get there. But there's always somebody ahead of you like forging the path. Mm -hmm. So. Another thing that stood out to me was just the drink water thing. I think that is a very healthy first step. I think so often we talk about, yeah, just what it takes to be healthy and then what's inexpensive. And this is like my go-to tip. Like I carry a water bottle with me everywhere I go. I'm drinking water all throughout the day. And not every other decision in my life is super healthy, but I think I've done that one thing right. And it <laughs> saves me money. Like I'm satisfied with water and I'm not spending money on sodas and juices. I am spending money on alcohol. Don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you can't drink be perfect. Water thing. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's, there's the whole thing about wishing your water was wine during the middle of the day. <laughs> is then that a whole thing the, yeah. or is that, it just like a, a one one lingering wish is that just me <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, yeah one of the things that I talk about in my book meal planning on a budget is like the scientific ways that you can buy less at the grocery store and so drinking water is one of them is when you're like hydrated fully then you are not as hungry throughout the day and so that means less snacking and mm-hmm. so you don't need to budget in for as many snacks um mm-hmm. and then when you're eating foods that are like high in fiber um then you can stay fuller longer and you can buy fewer or like less in quantity by buying like being focused on the fiber content of foods um and like other nutrients so yeah water is a yeah it's a not just like a healthy decision um but like a budget conscious one and it's great for your skin Mm -hmm. yeah if you want to like look young forever it's Uh. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, <laughs> which, which I do. I want to look young forever. <laughs> so I'm drinking water right now as I say that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and also reaching for the wine. <laughs> yeah. You're literally drinking wine. So. <laughs> All right. We have another uh article for you guys. It's by Sustainable Baby Steps. And so neither of the articles that we chose today were necessarily personal finance articles. They're from food blogs because if you're going to talk about healthy food, I would rather talk about you know articles from people that are really focused on healthy food with maybe just like a slight you know one or two articles about how to save money on it. Um, because I know as a money saving writer, I am far more focused on the money saving aspect than the healthy aspect, even though I'm like trying to be healthy. But I know that these writers are, uh, they know what they're talking about health wise. So they're going to know where to cut corners and where not to, uh, even Mm -hmm. though I want to cut corners everywhere. So, yeah, <laughs> I like this combination. I think it's a good a good conversation to have. Mm-hmm. So, um, in this article, Sustainable Baby Steps shows you how to save money uh, with Whole Foods, um, and what you're saving. I guess what you're saving in money, you're paying in time. She gives the example that like a bag of potato chips is usually only about 10 ounces. Um, So that's uh, like 0.62 pounds. And you traditionally pay about $4 for a bag in the grocery store. So I guess that's like a jumbo bag 
of potatoes. Yeah. No, the $4 is for a bag of potato chips. Oh, so gotcha. you can get like five pounds, a five pound bag of potatoes for about $4. So I guess she's mm-hmm. just getting the nice potato chips. So, um, but you're getting over 500% more potato for the same price when you get a five pound bag of potatoes. Um, but you're paying in the time it takes you to make potatoes with those potato chips. So it's essentially when you, when we think of healthy foods, we think that they cost more, but they technically don't. You just have to actually spend the time. So pay with your time in like preparing, um, the fast food items that you would normally just get in a drive through or in a gas station. So that's kind of what I liked because I, in addition to budgeting my money, uh, I have to budget my time as well. So some things mm-hmm. I have to pay more for at the sack, like, because I can't sacrifice my time in some places. Yeah. So yeah, I, when I read that, I was like, is she, does she actually make her own potato chips? Because in my mind, like, a bag of potato chips, like, in no way represents a potato to me. <laughs> like, I know that they use potatoes for it. But, like, you can't tell me, like, just go back, buy a bag of potatoes instead. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <look later. laughs> it's probably just an example because mm-hmm. I would never, if I bought a bag of potatoes, potato chips are the last thing that I would make out of them. Yeah. But it is. If, I mean, if potato chips are what you want and you're, you know, optimizing your dollar, then clearly the five pound bag is what you go with. Even if you're not spending $4 for a bag of potato chips, because I don't know where she lives, but I also don't buy potato chips. So maybe they are $4 a bag. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, 99 cents at all. The for sure. Yeah. If you're a potato chip fiend, maybe that's where you should shop. Yeah. But I think if you're, I think if you eat food, you should shop at Aldi. But that's uh, what we can talk about that later. Yeah. (laughs) We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. How about you, Jill? What do you think? Yeah, I liked her list of healthy and generally inexpensive. And then some of the ideas that she gave along with each of those ingredients or products and how you can use them. So like, you know, she Mm -hmm. said celery, like celery is healthy. 
It's not expensive. And ants on a log. Like, who, who wouldn't want an ant on the log, you know? It's a throwback to childhood. It's a crowd pleaser. Um, and oatmeal. Like, she just listed off all these different apples, bananas, like these these items that you can get relatively inexpensive, still, you know, maybe even organic that are healthy, but aren't going to cost you a fortune and how those can become your staples. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And oatmeal is one of those that like, I always forget about it. I don't know why I forget about oatmeal and obviously not, not the packets with that's like half sugar, but just like straight up oatmeal and cook it up and it's cheap and it's good. Even overnight oats. We do a lot of overnight oats. Uh, They're like good in the summer when it gets hot. Mm. Um, And even in the winter, like we rarely do cooked oats, but it's a quick breakfast that you can just pull out of the fridge in the morning. And I think it's all about like just changing your go-tos. Like you don't have to, um, totally change everything you're making, uh, but just replacing a few of those unhealthy go-tos with some healthy ones. And uh, she does a good job in kind of explaining in what capacity you can change those. Yeah. Yeah. And I also liked her challenge to make your own. I think that this has been something I've been practicing a little bit more lately. Um, in particular salad dressings. Like I find that my salad Mm -hmm. dressings are healthier, more cost effective and good. Like just some oil and vinegar and spices and garlic. And oh man, it's so good. Yeah. It's not that hard either. You can, and you can make more for later, like however long your salad's going to last that, or Mm -hmm. your bag of lettuce, you can make a dressing that lasts that long. Yeah. So some of these like condiments that, you know, you spend money on here and there, if you can figure out a way to to make your own hummus, you know, what, whatever you name it, it starts to make me think like, in what other ways can I be making my own instead of buying it, which goes along with another thing she talked about, which was learning how to cook. (laughs) Yeah. Yep, yep, <laughs> which yep. <laughs> for some, it just might be tweaking skills for other, it just might be an all out learning how to cook. But I think so much of why, you know, we can like turn up our noses to healthy food is because we don't know how to make it well and like make it mm-hmm. taste good. You know, the, the friends that I have who are really good cooks are generally also very healthy with the ingredients that they choose. And I am like floored. I'm like, holy moly, I could eat this food all day, every day. If I knew how to make it like this, this is incredible. Like the things these folks are doing with cauliflower these days, (laughs) it's amazing. So I bought a head of cauliflower and it's still sitting in my fridge, but I'm, I'm hoping to get creative. I can do, I can do some good things with cauliflower. Um, we do a, like a, like an orange, like orange chicken, but like do orange cauliflower. Ooh. Just bread it a little bit and like bake it and then toss it in some sauce. Um, so the sauce isn't like the healthiest, but then you take out like a little bit of the unhealthiness from frying it and replace cauliflower with the chicken. And yeah, yeah. I had no idea. And like, hold your butt for this one. I had cauliflower tacos recently oh yes i've had yes the meat and then this slaw and then oh like shredded carrots i don't even know i was i wasn't i was in another dimension it was so incredible like more incredible than any other taco i've ever had you know (laughs) not to mention that it was cauliflower and i'm not one of those people who was like it tastes like regular chicken like no it was it was on another playing field like it's not like it was trying to compete with me and and i'm not one of those people who's gonna say that like turkey bacon tastes like bacon because no you're just wrong you haven't you've been too far out of the game of bacon if you think turkey bacon tastes like bacon (laughs) so 
just for a frame of reference for people who are listening. And are just like, so that you understand. <laughs> where we're coming from. I'm not completely crazy. I know that bacon <laughs> is the best thing on the planet and it doesn't taste like turkey bacon. So that that's the reference point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way. I can respect that. Yeah, I know. I'm so I'm so sad that you're not there. But you know what? It's the differences that bind us together. I don't know. I don't know what people uh, say. Yeah, it's fine. You can feel sorry for me. It's okay. <laughs> I I actually like didn't really like bacon when I ate meat. So I guess it was just fine for me to stop eating meat because uh, everyone would have looked at me weird anyway. <laughs> So freeze it up for the rest of us. Yeah, it was better for me to just like cut it out altogether. Yeah. How'd you feel about hot dogs? I actually enjoyed me a hot dog. Oh yes, Um, you're a girl after my own heart. But uh it's good to hear you say that. So in college there was a guy that sold vegan hot dogs. And this may have been another (laughs) reason why I went vegetarian. Because he had the stand in downtown, he would open up at like midnight and sell vegan hot dogs with like sauerkraut and like um, just all these like good toppings, yeah. and they were just as good as regular hot dogs. And um, my lord, I miss those days. Oh, so. gotta get you a vegan hot dog. You have to get me a <laughs> vegan hot dog stand with this vegan <laughs> hot dog guy. I swear, if I'm ever if I'm ever in Orlando for any reason past midnight, I probably would buy three. <laughs> Why does it have to be past midnight? Because that's when he opens. Because oh. it's like a downtown like drunk people thing. Because there's actually like a lot of vegan vegetarians in Orlando. I think I guess so. Drunk vegans needing their hot dogs. Yes, yes. Jill, how do you feel? I know that in when we're talking about healthy food, the topic of organic produce always comes up. Yeah. And um, some people are really passionate about it and some people don't care at all. But I feel like there is a balance that we can achieve while still being yeah. frugal. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. And again, this is, this is my growth edge. (laughs) Like I'm not great at food. I'm not great at planning ahead. I'm not great at shopping. So take this one with a grain of salt. But I think the approach that I have always appreciated is the buy organic where it counts, but otherwise it don't worry about it that much. If you don't have the money, like that's where I've landed right now. I don't know that could change in the future. Um, but I know that I've heard of like, you know, the dirty dozen, the clean 15. And I think they talked about that in the root and revel article. They might've talked Mm -hmm. about it in both articles, but I know it was in the root and revel where it lists out what those things are. And so basically, you know, the products where you're going to eat the skin or have a very thin layer of skin, um, that that is more important to buy organic than the products that have like the thicker skin that you peel off. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of where I land on it. Um, I appreciate that balance, but I also don't lose sleep over the way that I shop. Mm -hmm. How about you? I don't buy much organic. Uh, if I buy milk, then I will buy that organic. Mm -hmm. Um, and as far as vegetables go, I just make it a point to wash it before I use it. Mm. And um, my father-in-law is a farmer. So, and he is not an organic farmer, but he is is pretty like pretty adamant that the only like safe food that you can eat is like the food that you grow yourself. Like if it's... Mm. Uh, Even if it's organic, you kind of still have to use some like, you know, intense stuff to like keep bugs away and stuff. So, um, and, and also I, I don't know if this is true, but like you run the risk of contamination from farms that use pesticides. So, um, like I can't confirm that personally, but it's, 
if you're buying food from like a large scale operation, then you don't know what's on it, whether you're buying it organic or not. Mm -hmm. Um, So unless it's from a small farm that you know, uh, or you're growing it in your own backyard, if you're that committed to buying or to being organic, then that's kind of where you have to go. And then in which case I feel like the uh, Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15 are things that you should really pay attention to. And you have to make some sacrifices. You can't buy every fruit and vegetable that's out there or make extravagant recipes if you're trying to stick to a budget and eat organic. Mm -hmm. You just have to... There are are vegetables you will have to sacrifice Mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of the budget. Agreed. But one place that I can always find affordable organic food uh, is Aldi. And that is really the only place that I would buy organic produce or dairy or anything because it is a normal price versus an obnoxious like extra Mm -hmm. like premium. Mm -hmm. It still is so shocking. And yes, I will like, I will sing all these praises so the cows come home, but even still, like there are times when the organic price is literally double or triple mm-hmm. what the regular mm-hmm. price is. And so, like the frugal part of me is like, holy moly, why wouldn't I go for the cheaper? Like I'm always looking at like the unit price and like how much am I actually paying per pound and what's the better deal. And so, it's mm-hmm. tough to make that decision on something that you're like. I don't know. Is it affecting me? Isn't it affecting me? I don't know what it's doing. And I'm not going to know for years and years from now. It's like, for me, that's just where I'm at with it. And again, I think, yeah, the dirty dozen clean 15 is a good rule of thumb, but it's tough when, yeah, when the organic is that much more expensive, even if you're only talking, Oh, Three dollars for this bag of such and such, and the non organic is eighty nine cents. <laughs> yes, I was in Aldi on Sunday, and uh, the strawberries were on sale for ninety nine cents, and then organic strawberries were three sixty nine. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's it's something you have to decide what is most important to you. And that's the essence of frugality is spending intentionally. So if food is what is most important to you and you decide that you will give up other things to pay the premium for organic, then you should do that. Um, But know that you're paying that premium, like admit that and then decide what is going to give. Yeah. So it's just a, a... decision Mm -hmm. to pick something else over something else. And that's it. And I think on the flip side of that, I think hardcore organic shoppers would argue and people who don't do it are going to pay the medical bills on the flip side. So Mm -hmm. time will tell. (laughs) Yeah. But honestly, I think if you're going to be shopping somewhere and you're going to be choosing whole foods over packaged foods, and, you know, avoiding the chemical crap storms of fat free and low fat and free this, free that. Mm -hmm. I think if you're just buying, if you're focused on buying whole foods and using those whole foods, I think you're going to be better off. Um, Mm. Yeah. I don't think you can lose that battle, but good word. Yeah. I, time will tell. I guess I could be proven wrong. Let's stick on the topic of Aldi because... So I had uh, a girl come up to me at church on Sunday. And um, after reading my book that I referenced earlier, she said, I made my first trip to Aldi this weekend. And I was blown away by how much money I saved. Uh, She said what she got for $30, she would have spent... Uh, $70 on at uh, the regular grocery store she shops at. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and so, so then did you tell her like, give me your extra 40 then? <laughs> I should have. Uh, like, are you going to so buy me like, dinner with the extra? You're <laughs> welcome. Um, 
But like, I'm like also thinking about all of the other. So aside from like produce, you can also buy like really good quality cheeses and you can buy wow. the better quality dairy and um, like the better quality oil or, or whatever it is that you choose to buy. Um, you can choose to buy the healthier type because mm-hmm. of the amount you're saving mm-hmm. at Aldi. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, whether you're going organic or not, like even more the organic is, is still a great price compared to other stores. And like, yeah, great frozen foods. Great. Just, mm-hmm. just great. There, yeah. there are a few things that if I'm making a specialty recipe, I, I can't always find at Aldi, but it is worth it to still make Aldi my main place and then mm-hmm. swing by those other grocery stores, you know, when I have time to pick up that, that item that, you know, Aldi just doesn't have in stock, but overall, man, it's a killer place. Yeah. It's definitely worth tailoring my meal planning and my recipes around what I know Mm -hmm. Aldi carries. And it can be a little nerve wracking if you've never shopped there. I think some people get overwhelmed I mean, I see people before they even get into the store be overwhelmed by the cart situation, (laughs) having to uh, remember your own bags and then remember a quarter. Um, But like with anything like budgeting related or anything that has a good outcome, you just have to practice and you just have to like dive in and do it um, and then mess up and then do it better. Yeah. So do you have like a large population around you that's like not gone to Aldi? Surprisingly, yes. And it's crazy because we live in a pretty like urban suburban area that has quite a few Aldis. Like we have at least six or seven, um, you know, within a 45 minute vicinity from us. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's uh, not hard to come by. And I know that not everybody has an Aldi near them. So, I mean, there are definitely alternatives. There's Lidl, there's Save-A-Lot. There are a few others like in the Midwest that I'm forgetting. But uh, like, I think the point is to to try it, Mm -hmm. even if it seems a little scary, because it could yield like a fantastic money saving outcome. Yeah. Like it's so, f- yeah. so good. I and mean, even just so what, what would you get there and what wouldn't you get there? Like I know some people still can't give up, you know, certain grocery stores for whatever reason, but discover like, Oh, but all these, my place for, for this thing. Um, and even checking out your area for other discount grocery stores that may be like a mom and pop establishment. Like, Mm-hmm. We've got a couple around here. I know we took you, Jen, and Trap oh my gosh, yeah, one near us. Um, it's called Swan's Pantry, but basically, it's like scratch and dent products that maybe are about to to expire. And so some people are like, "Oh, that's weird. I'm not going to do it." Okay, fine, but go and see what you find and what you are comfortable buying. Like I know mm-hmm. some people are like, "I'm never going to buy a dented can because." You don't know if that could have meant that the food went bad. Fine. Don't buy the dented can. However, there's like all these products, name brand stuff, name brand frozen foods or whatever that, you know, the grocery store is just trying to push off their shelves or never made it to the grocery store for whatever reason. Um, at really discounted prices. Like we'll get naked juices and, you know, these products that are normally a lot of money. It's like, four dollars for a naked juice we get for 99 cents that are going to expire in a month from now so um oh my gosh yeah Yeah. that place is magical jill and i still dream about it (laughs) come back and visit (laughs) oh my gosh i can't wait (laughs) to visit exotic pennsylvania just to go to swan's pantry (laughs) and the people around me are probably like swan's pantry but man (laughs) it is a diamond in the rough it is. And you don't know the stuff. Like, And these places are usually holes in the wall. Um, but I think using like um, things like Yelp 
or like other local rating systems, you can usually find diamonds in the rough. Yeah. Um, and you can usually filter stuff out through there. If you're too nervous, if it's like in a weird, like sketchy part of town or something, um, you can you can use like ratings websites to see if it's worth your time to check it out too. You're so good at that. You came here and you were discovering things in our area that I had no idea existed. I'm like, uh-huh. where are you? What is this site you're on? I've heard of Yelp, but who knows? Yeah. I'm just trying to optimize my time. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's all about optimizing because time is as precious as money and Yelp, uh, optimizes both for me. I like it. I heart Yelp. (laughs) Uh, so it's time for our bill of the week segment. Yes. Time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the bill of the week. Hi, Jen and Jillian. Has anyone started calling you guys JJ yet? I feel like we should make that happen. Anyway, this is Catherine and I have a bill of the week for you. My husband and I just paid our rent, and this is my favorite bill I've ever paid because we just moved from a one-bedroom house to a, no, excuse me, from a one-bedroom apartment to a three-bedroom house. It's a whole boatload more of money a month, but we can afford it, and it feels fantastic to know it's budgeted and it's covered. I love what you guys are doing. I'm a huge fan of frugality. It's the reason that we can afford this new place. And it feels great to pay all my bills like this. Bye, guys. That's awesome, Catherine. Congratulations. (laughs) I like how she came up with the J and J. J J. Trying to invent something new. It sounds like um, a place you'd get ice cream from. A J J. If you have a bill that you like, whether it be a rent bill like Catherine or a dog named Bill, like last week, uh, we want to hear about it. So visit frugalfriendspodcast.com and uh, you'll see our Bill of the Week Google voicemail number. Give us a ring. Moving on. It's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience. You have the knowledge. It's time to get credit for the work you've done. You can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. It's time to move forward in your career, for your family and for yourself with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late, never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. We hear a lot about fully electric vehicles and Toyota has them with more on the way. But we also know ABEV is not for everyone, whether it's because of cost, range or concern about finding a charging station when you need it. Plus, the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter Beyond Zero, Toyota's vision for a carbon neutral future in vehicles, and in manufacturing plants, too, in the years ahead. The materials used to make just one long-range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug-in hybrids or 90 gas-electric hybrids. That's why a Toyota's position today is Electrified Diversified, empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with the vehicle that's right for you, a hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or battery EV. So, shop. Learn more and get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places. 
Let's wrap it up for the week with some practical tips for eating healthy. Um, Number one, eating healthy is cheaper, but you pay in time and taste. Uh, so obviously we, we mentioned before that obviously you pay in time and then while you're learning to cook, um, which I have been diligently cooking and meal planning for two and a half years and I'm still learning how to cook. You can ask Travis, uh, sometimes you pay in taste. So that's just a thing. Um, that's just a thing you got to go through. Yeah, and just if, learn your condiments that you like. Just some hot sauce or uh-huh. sriracha or sweet baby rays, whatever it is. Just put that stuff on it. Yeah. And even if it's not the healthiest at first, <laughs> while you refine your skills, um, some, you know, some cheap sauces can do yeah. some extreme magic. So yeah, don't be afraid of them. It at least saves you money from not throwing it in the trash and mm-hmm. getting takeout. <laughs> mm-hmm. So true. Um, also, uh, in budgeting time, um, meal planning and meal prepping is key. So planning your meals so that when you come home, you know exactly what's for dinner and you don't have to think about... You don't have to ask that like over-asked question. Like, what do you want? Well, what do you want? Anything you want? Anything you want? <laughs> um, are you like tapping our phone lines, Jen? <laughs> no, they're just every we're just, night for Eric yeah. and I. We're just saying the same things over mm-hmm. here. So, yeah. um, so meal planning eliminates that question, and it literally takes like fifteen minutes to just look on Pinterest and say, "I'm going to have this, this, and this," and. Um, and then once you buy the stuff at the grocery store, pre-prepping it, um, there most things will keep for five days of like, you know, if you pre-chop it or something or pre pre-make something. So some people will go extreme. They'll cook one thing and eat it throughout the entire week, or they'll cook all their meals and and eat it. I cannot do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I'll, the extent that I'll go is just like pre-chopping some stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and that'll take me like an hour or two after I grocery shop and I don't do it every week. Um, not perfect. Didn't do it this week, but most weeks I try as soon as I come home from the grocery store, I'm like, I have my chopping board out and I'm like chopping in. How about you, Jill? Any meal prepping or planning? Yeah. When I'm on top of things, I find that it does go a lot better when I come straight home from the grocery store and I chop things up. Like I'm more likely to eat the lettuce if it's already like cut up in the bowl. Um, so kind of like setting myself up in that way. But I also have found for me, and I don't do this that often, but again, when I do, it's phenomenal. I will get together with a friend and we will make meals together. So like I'll make three or four meals. She'll make three or four meals in the same space. So it's like, we're hanging out, we're having fun cooking. And then we split all of our meals. So, you know, what I normally make is too much food for two people. And then we get tired of leftovers. So it's like this great solution for that. So I make three or four meals, but I walk away with, you know, six to eight meals and, and same for mm-hmm. her. And, and yeah. we have made them so that most of them are freezable because a lot of times my life is like, I have no idea what, what tonight is going to look like much less tomorrow. So, because that's part of my problem is, you know, remembering to like thaw food, get it out the night before, all that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. So this is, I've already got all these meals in the freezer so I can pull them out and, and defrost them or, you know, just throw them in the oven or whatever when I get home and there's a meal. So I think it's also just like learning your lifestyle and trying the thing, trying a bunch of things out and learning what works. Um, and recognizing that like different seasons of life will bring different solutions for you. Like that has worked for a really insane time of life where I don't have 
literally any time. So I get together like one afternoon a month and just make a ton of meals that go in my freezer. So yes. And freeze your meals. They don't just save on time, but they also like if your freezer is packed, it takes your refrigerator less work, like less energy Mm -hmm. to continue running it. So that's another perk about having freezer meals and you know what's in them. They're fresh. They're healthy. There's no hidden preservatives. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea that you said of cooking with a friend because there are so many people that do not eat leftovers and they use it as an excuse to like not be frugal. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. You don't have to. There's always an alternative um, like doing like freezer meal swapping Mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. And it's, it's a testament like... I will eat leftovers for like one day after, but that's pretty much my limit. Mm -hmm. And so there's still ways that you can make a bunch of meals, save time, save energy throughout the week, uh, and, and limit eating out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we have for you this week. Um, go forth and eat healthy we would love to know that your uh, healthy tips and tricks for a follow-up episode, uh, food is in our lives every day. So obviously, we're going to spend more time talking about it. This was just kind of uh, the tip of the iceberg for food. Yeah. I'm hungry yeah. now. You want a hot dog? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On a vegan hot dog. <laughs> All right. I'm Jill. I'm I'm not Jill. I'm Jen. And uh, I'm with my co-host Jill. And uh, that's that's it for Frugal Friends this week. That's it. That's all, that's all we got this week. All right. Happy eating. Have a good one. Eat healthy. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriano. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.